Hey everybody, I'm Albert Hernandez, but they call me the Untamed Chef. What does untamed mean? Uh, undomesticated, no rules, but we still want to follow some basic simple rules in the kitchen. What we have here today is we're gonna do an amazing omelet here with these beautiful shrimp. I'm gonna be doing you my amazing steakhouse risotto with some rocket raspberries and gorgonzola and my untamed Brussels sprouts. Now let's get started with this omelet. So what we're gonna use first are some beautiful gray double A eggs. Gray double A is good because what this means, this is not gonna break as fast as a grade A or a grade B egg. It costs a little bit more, two, three cents, why not, right? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna crack our eggs here into the bowl and then we want to pour them in here. And the reason why we do this, sometimes if the eggs are stillborns or they're contaminated, if we pour this directly, we are going to destroy our product. We do not want to do that. We just want to put our eggs in this bowl. So far, they look beautiful, fantastic. This is what we want. We're going to pour in here. Now what I like to do to make my eggs fluffy is we want to put a little bit of heavy cream. It's about right here. And most people they don't understand is when we're whisking, they just want to go like this. This isn't doing nothing. In order to get this cream fully incorporated, you can start seeing the fluffiness here of this egg. We want to get it mixed around now. Once we got it fluffy, then we can start mixing it around here and we're good. So in our pan right here on low heat, we're going to drop in our butter. Get this going. And while we're working on this, we got these beautiful black tiger prawns right here. What we're gonna do with a nice little chili rub that's gonna give this a little bit of kick to this omelet right here. What I wanna demonstrate real quick here is with prawns and with cleaning them, what we just wanna grab from the bottom, we wanna peel off this bottom layer first. And then start peeling around. This is the easiest way to clean a prawn. Take everything off. A little bit of a quick deveining action. And we got a nice clean shrimp right here. We go right into our pan with these beautiful prawns. So we want to get this butter just a little bit brown. When I see brown, I see caramelization. Caramelization is a good thing because we're enhancing the flavor of what we're trying to do. Okay, so for the prawns, uh, what we're gonna do here is a little bit of this excess butter from the pan. I just want to pour it right in here on a low heat. When we do an omelet, we don't want to have this full of grease, full of butter. We just need enough to get those eggs circulating and moving around a little bit. We're going to put a little bit of our, uh, our paprika. Some cayenne. We want to have a little bit of kick to this. A little bit of chili powder. Just going to let that work a little bit there. Now what I want to do is raise the heat up a little bit to medium on my, on my omelet. Now when you're doing eggs, over easy, over medium, over hard, high, we're gonna do slow and low, and we're doing our uh, omelet, we wanna do slow and low. That's what we're doing, we're just gonna pour that in here. Very, very nice, very beautiful. You can start to see how it's starting to curl up a little bit already right here. So what I'm gonna do is just bring it in a little bit. This is called draining the omelet. And this is very important right here, because this makes sure that all the egg we have in here is getting fully incorporated around. And this looks absolutely gorgeous right here. Moving my prawns still. We're gonna start lifting it up a little bit here. I wanna keep working that egg around. Oh, that looks fantastic right there. Now like the great Julia Child once said, it doesn't matter how we flip this egg as long as we flip it. So once I get it, I'm gonna turn the heat completely off. We don't want the other side to cook anymore. Our prawns look amazing. I'm gonna give those just a little tiny flip over here. And like I said, I like to cook with some heat. I like to do things a little bit more untamed than the average chef does. And this is good for your creativity, getting things going. 
of what we're trying to do. You can start to see some of this color that I have right here, how beautiful this is right here because this chili is starting to crust onto these shrimp now. So what I'm gonna do is turn this pan completely off because we don't need it anymore. So there's our beautiful omelet. So what I got with our omelet now is we wanna put a little bit of tomato right in the middle of this. Oh, a little bit too much there. We wanna do a little bit of our, uh, our beautiful chives. What we're gonna do here is I wanna get a little bit of color on these uh, onions. So what I'm doing is just cutting through here. I'm gonna do paper thin slices because what I'm gonna do is now that we've turned the heat off with our prawns, I just, I love the taste of raw onions. However, caramelized onions are so much better. And I'm just gonna put these in here just a little bit, just to get them mixed around here. We wanna get some of that chili flavor going throughout those onions. Wanna start building up that flavor. Hit this with a little bit of salt right here. I normally say put pepper. We don't need to put any pepper though. We're absolutely fantastic on our flavor right now. And while that's sitting there getting marinated and doing its thing, I'm gonna get this beautiful avocado. Now with avocado, you see how I cut right down into this. Fingers are still back. I'm not exposing anything. Everything is still back. We're just gonna roll all the way through. Spin right off there. And get our avocado. I'm just scooping it out right here as much as I possibly can. Now sometimes you get an avocado that's a little bit ripe and sometimes you get one that's a little more unripe, but with the unripe part, we could just cut that off. We could still definitely work with that. Avocado has such a nice, beautiful, creamy flavor and it adds a level of texture to this wonderful omelet. And because we're not using any cheese, you don't ever pair shrimp with cheese, not for a dish like this. So what I'm gonna do is just cut some really nice thin slices, keeping my fingers back always. And remember that every time, you guys, whenever you're cutting with a knife, especially one like this, you wanna keep those fingers back. We're gonna get this right here, throw that in our omelet. We're gonna get ready to plate this bad boy now. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna just bring this omelet forward. Now here's the trick right here with a French style omelet like we're doing, we're gonna roll it with our hands so it's not really gonna be a big mess here. I wanna get our goodies here. We'll put these in the middle. Absolutely gorgeous, take a look at that. Isn't that absolutely beautiful or what? We're gonna get some of these onions right here, throw them in. That's fantastic. We want a little bit of garnish. So I saved a little bit of avocado for garnish. So what I'm gonna do is very, very carefully, as careful as we can, wanna plate this and then we're gonna roll it right over because then what we're gonna do is we wanna grab it, we wanna curl it in here. Looks absolutely gorgeous. Grab one of our towels here. Just wanna clean this off. A prawn goes in the middle because we want everybody to know exactly what it is that they're eating. And we're just gonna put some of our onions right here. And like I said, we wanna have a little bit of this garnish. We wanna know exactly what it is that we're eating here. Uh, so we're just gonna take a little bit more of our beautiful avocado. And remember, it's untamed. This does not have to be perfect. We are not in a five-star restaurant, people. We are in your kitchen being untamed. And this is gorgeous right here. This is what we want. We need a little more of our uh, chive just right over the top. Show some of that sexiness to everybody there. And what I wanna do is get our Serrano chili. Now, one thing about Serrano chilies is they taste just as good raw as they do when they're sauteed. But what I like to do is just cut them real paper thin. I'm just gonna go really, really small here. And just really, really, see how my fingers are staying back, everybody? We don't wanna expose this at all. And I'm just gonna run one right down the middle here. Very rustic, a good source of heat, but a good balance with the shrimp, with the egg, the tomato. Everything will make sense, I promise you. And here we have our untamed omelet. Don't go anywhere, I'm gonna clean this right up, and we're gonna come back with the untamed Brussels sprouts. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody, we're back. I'm glad you came back with us. So what we're gonna do now is my untamed Brussels sprouts. What I wanted to do though, is to speed up a little bit of our process, I went ahead and put the Brussels sprouts in. As you can see, uh, Par cooked them seven minutes. We brought it to a boil. We don't want these Brussels sprouts to be mushy. I want this texture to be in there. It's important to have texture because texture is gonna enhance the flavor of the dish, but more importantly, it's gonna make it super exciting, which we really, really want. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my heat up a little bit here. We're gonna do about a tablespoon of olive oil. Get this worked around here. And you can tell it's working around, the pan's getting hot. 
when the olive oil starts to move around fast. Now remember, olive oil is gonna hit a smoke point fast, so we gotta work fast, so that's a good thing. Okay, so what I have going on right here is our olive oil. We're gonna go ahead and drop in some of our beautiful onion. You can start hearing that noise. Oh my goodness, I love the sound of onions caramelizing. That means a lot of flavors coming our way. Just wanna mix that around here. Now one thing we don't wanna do is everybody's doing this. When we do that, we're taking the pan off the heat. We take the pan off the heat, guess what? We're not cooking. So I like to leave it on the heat and just bring the onions forward and bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, easy. A Little bit of our sun-dried tomatoes here. Now sun-dried tomatoes, I love them. Uh, taking these wonderful tomatoes, originally done in Italy, letting them dry out in the sun, and they turn into this amazing, amazing product. But we're gonna buy our sun-dried tomatoes today. Some of our Serrano chili in. Beautiful Serrano chili. And what I wanna do now is get some of our bacon, but we're gonna save the bacon for last. Okay, so once I get a little bit of color going here like we have right now, I'm gonna give it a flip here and right here. A Little bit more olive oil. And this is very important because what we're trying to do is we wanna bring this temperature up and we wanna bring these flavors up too. Just gonna move that around a little tiny bit here. And then what we're gonna do, look at these beautiful Brussels sprouts, absolutely gorgeous. Make sure that they're very, very, they are hot. We wanna make sure that when we put them in the pan, it's gonna spark a little bit, so just back up a little bit. That's a good sound right there. It means good stuff is happening. It takes all the liquid out here of the water. Okay, move that to the side. No more distractions. Get right into it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I just wanna work these flavors around a little bit. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more oil now. Now that we've incorporated the olive oil, we're gonna add some of our salt right over the top. And when you pour salt, always go about this high and go back and forth. You don't wanna stay like this, because if you stay like this, you're gonna have a salty product. When we do it like this, I'm evenly salting everything that we're doing here. Very nice. Okay, so now that we got our salt in, we could put our bacon in, but before we do our bacon, I wanna add some of our cream, because if we put the bacon in and then the cream, Bacon's not gonna be crispy. Crispy bacon, absolutely not. Not when we're cooking untamed. Cream goes in, gorgeous. Now this is important. Parmesan cheese goes in now. This is such a beautiful dish. You guys are gonna love this, I know it. Put some of that parm in there. I wanna add just a little bit more of our cream and a little bit more of our parm, and we're gonna hit this with a little bit of fresh pepper. Now this is very important, we wanna let this reduce down because now this is becoming a thickening sauce, which we want this to be, so we could really enjoy these flavors. Take a look at this, isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness. We haven't even got the bacon in there yet. A Little bit more parm, I love parm. You can put as much parm as you want, I love it. So I'm gonna put just a little bit more, and one for good luck, and one for my mom. Fantastic. A little bit of black pepper here. Turn the heat completely off now. Some of our salt. And every time I salt something or I season, I make sure I toss it so we can get a different angle of what we're trying to do. Now here we go everybody. Bacon, right in there. Now take a look at these beautiful Brussels sprouts with this bacon, unbelievable. Smells amazing. Now don't go anywhere, we're coming back with my untamed risotto. Everybody, welcome back. So like I said, we're gonna do uh, this wonderful risotto. I call this my untamed steakhouse risotto. It's taking the steakhouse, taking something nice like a risotto and just kind of, boom, putting them together and having this untamed experience. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our, our pan here really, really hot because we're gonna start to puff up this wonderful rice. And we're using a mix of equal parts olive oil and canola. And it does look like a lot, but trust me, we need this, we're gonna get started right away. Got one cup of our uh, arborio rice here. We're gonna throw in here a sprig of thyme and a sprig of rosemary. You can start to see the rice is already starting to get toasted up a little bit right here. And this is what we want. We don't want that to be 
black, but brown is absolutely where we want it to be at. We're gonna throw a little bit more oil in here. Fantastic. So what we're gonna do is we're caramelizing our, we're not really caramelizing the rice, but we're starting to get that color on the rice. So I guess in a way we are caramelizing our rice a little bit. I have some of our uh, beef stock right here. Normally risotto is made with a chicken stock, but this is steakhouse risotto, so we're gonna go with the beef stock today. And we're gonna get this going a little bit, so this is gonna start getting a little bit hot. We're gonna start incorporating this into our risotto, or into our borio, and start making uh, risotto. So what risotto actually is, is the process of what we're doing. This is our borio, this is beef stock, but risotto is actually the finished product of what we're trying to do here. It's the, it's the uh, cooking technique. A little bit more oil, this smells unbelievable. And what I'm gonna do here is with a microplane or with a grater, whatever you guys have at home, we're gonna get a fresh piece of garlic. And we're just gonna go right over the top, hitting it right over. And we wanna get this all in there. Just hit it on the bottom. It's in there, we know it's in there. Fantastic. We got our toast coming now. You're starting to see our rice toasting up a little bit here, and this is a good thing. We're gonna hit a little bit of our fresh shallots right here. Everybody likes shallots. Mixed between a purple onion and the most amazing piece of garlic you ever had. I call it a shallot. Very, very fresh, very nice. And remember, cooking techniques, cooking procedures. They have to start first with confidence. When we're cooking, we wanna be confident, we wanna be having a good time. We don't wanna just be rushing through everything. Are we gonna open up a cookbook and what are we gonna learn? Probably nothing. But when we just have fun, that's when your inner untamed comes out, and that's what we're trying to do, everybody. Beef stock goes in for the first pour. Back up a little bit. While that's doing that, I'm gonna add a little bit of wine. I'm gonna turn the heat all the way up. And I'm gonna get my mushrooms, a little bit more of our oil mix in a pan over here. Put this out of way. And all I'm doing is just dropping them in here, as you guys can see. We wanna get this caramelization going, wanna get this flavor going, this is very important. And what else I also have are these beautiful spring onions. I call them Mexican onions, that's how we say it in California. This is where they're grown. Absolutely gorgeous, pretty much what we have is like a scallion on steroids, but I mean, this flavor is impeccable. It's super amazing, super soft, and more importantly, this caramelizes better than anything that you could possibly try to caramelize. We got those in the pan. Fresh rosemary and fresh thyme going right in. We'll let that do its thing, slow and low, while our risotto cooks down. So if you notice with our risotto, what's happening here, it's, we know that it's definitely taking in the flavor and that's what we want. But here's how you can tell, when do I need to add more stock to it, chef? Well, this is when you need to add more stock to it. What we wanna do, the traditional way. This is all still coming together and that's what we want to happen. Once this stops coming together, that's when we're gonna hit it with a little bit more stock. What we're trying to do is get this rice to puff up so when we put it in our mouth, boom, it just explodes with a lot of flavor. So we don't wanna make it mushy, we don't wanna make it chewy. Our borio is a very expensive rice, but it's also worth taking that extra little bit of time to put that little bit more of the EX and extraordinary to make this an amazing meal. So we can start to see the rice is still coming together, but it's definitely taking in all that liquid and that's what we wanted to happen. So while this liquid's coming in here, what I'm gonna do is get ready to hit it with a little bit more stock. And this is hot, so be careful, but it does have to be hot for this to properly do what it's supposed to do when we're making risotto. Heats all the way up, that's fantastic. We're gonna do a little bit of seasoning on our, uh, our mushroom and onion. And I'm gonna hit this with a little bit more oil too and bring the heat up to about a medium heat. So just like that, everybody. Beautiful, rustic, amazing flavors. Things we can buy every day. No specialty products here, just keeping it real simple keeping it beautiful, but more importantly, keeping it untamed. Okay, so we got our flavors going here. I'm gonna get my steaks ready. Beautiful steaks that we have right here. 
I cut them into chunks because the way I'm gonna plate this is gonna be more of a rustic approach. And with risotto, it's very delicate. We're throwing that out the window. We wanna keep the flavor delicate. We wanna make a risotto like we'd make for a man. Why not, right? We do a good heavy pepper. This is like a uh, au poivre kind of style, which means peppered steak in French. Season, a nice generous seasoning there. Flavors are going here, the risotto's working. So just that easy, we're multitasking, we're touching everything, we're getting all over the board, and that's exactly what we wanna do. When you make a risotto, you don't wanna to concentrate too much on it because then it won't be right. Risotto's supposed to be made with a lot of love. So we can start to see now, it's absorbing all that flavor, that's what we want it to do. But it's gonna be just about time right now to add some more of our, of our stock in there. So we're gonna add just a little bit more here in a second. Do not try this at home, not yet. Okay, so what we're doing is just getting it up there. I'm trying to work it all the way through. Fantastic. Oh, that looks fantastic. It smells so amazing in here. I wish you guys had smell-o-vision like I do at home. You would love this. Okay, we're gonna add a little more of our stock in here. Very gently, there we go. And this is the process of making risotto right here, exactly what it is that we're doing. It's absolutely fantastic. Steaks are ready to go. Mushrooms are going with our onion. It smells amazing. We're gonna hit that with a little bit of white wine right now. Take a look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. You give me a whole plate of these on Super Bowl Sunday, you can have all the hot wings, all the ribs you want. Just finish that off right there. Get a little bit more of our beef stock. This looks absolutely fantastic. Take a look at these wonderful colors right here that we got. This is flavor. This is flavor concentrating into something so beautiful, you guys, I can't even explain it. Add a little bit more of our uh, oil into this pan. This is one amazing steakhouse style risotto. I absolutely love this. Take a look at the color on this onion right here. That's absolutely gorgeous. And that's what we want right there because what that is, that's a caramelized color. It's such a soft onion already that it's gonna cook up beautifully and we know that. Risotto's about done. Time to get our wonderful steaks in now. Get that sear going. Back on the heat, salt. A little bit of pepper, other side. I like my steaks rare to medium rare with risotto. It's very delicate. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull the thyme and the rosemary out of the risotto. We've, uh, we've taken the flavor that we wanted, but now it's time to pull this stuff out because these stems are inedible. We're gonna do now, risotto gets hit with cream. Aged Parmesan, 10 months. beautiful right here. What we're trying to do, there's no such thing as a risotto being too creamy, in my opinion. So what I want to do, oh, drop a little piece there. I want to put as much Parmesan as we can in here. We want this to be really, really nice and creamy. So now what's happening is the stock, the cream, and the Parmesan are all coming together beautifully. Add a little bit more stock in there to build that flavor up. Check on our steak real quick, that's very important. Steaks have beautiful color on them. We're almost about done here. Onions and mushrooms smell amazing. I'm gonna hit those with a little bit of wine right now. A little bit more stock to get our creaminess going. We can kill the heat on our stock now. Risotto's nice and creamy. Steak is working. Onions and mushrooms are ready to rock and roll. We're gonna come back right now and I'm gonna show you how this looks all plated up. Everybody, welcome back. Just wanna say thank you for coming and being untamed with me today here on The Untamed Chef. We started off today with our wonderful blackened tiger prawn omelet with that creamy avocado, that nice chili spiced uh, onion, our tomato, we got our raw serrano chilies. We worked into these wonderful untamed Brussels sprouts, 
bacon, sun-dried tomatoes, caramelized onions. Absolute amazing with that aged Parmesan. And lastly, we finish off with this beautiful steakhouse risotto. We got the button mushrooms, the gorgonzola, the Mexican onion. Amazing risotto that we all cook together. This is a fantastic dish right here. I'm Chef Albert Hernandez, and we'll see you next week on The Untamed Chef.